Hello, everyone, and welcome to Weekend Rental episode 47. We are your favorite bi weekly gaming and geek culture podcast. My name is Ryan, and as always, I'm joined by Andy. Hey. And Nate. What's going on, guys? Back in the saddle. This has been a while since we've done a traditional episode after our, our travels to the Midwest Gaming Classic, so it'll be fun to get back into a buy rent burn. And uh, we're going to kick this one off with the Super Nintendo. So if you're not familiar with this intro segment of the podcast, basically with Byron Burn, we all pick a game for a given system. Of course, the Super Nintendo this go around. Um, we'll all play those games individually, and then we'll give our thoughts on which game we would personally buy, rent, or burn. So the picks this week, Andy has gone with Run Saber. Nate has gone with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And I've gone with Out to Lunch. Uh, so let's go back up to the top. We're going to discuss um these games individually as we go through so the description we'll start off with on run saber here uh, according to game facts uh, the year is 2998 and the earth is hopelessly polluted mankind's last chance for a clean planet rests in the hands of dr bruford's plan uh, to use radiation to trigger a change only something goes horribly wrong dr bruford is mutated and begins an evil quest for world domination Enter the Run Sabers, uh, cybernetically advanced humans with the raw power to level cities. Um, as Alan used the Thunder Sword to create concussive waves of energy, as Sheena uh, wielded the Ice Sword to slam a blizzard at the Mad Doctor's forces. Uh, team up for nonstop action that is guaranteed to put your skills to the ultimate test in this futuristic adventure saga. I I didn't know they had different weapons. That's interesting. They seem the same. Yeah. They're about the same. Yeah. This game is like somebody completely cloned Strider. Yep. Put it on the Super Nintendo and then said, uh, think of two words that describe Strider, and that's what we'll name our game. And it's like, well, you run, and he has a saber. So that's pretty much what this game is. It is... It is wholesale stealing almost every idea from Strider. Yep. And executing on all of them less effectively. <laughs> yeah. Which is sad because this is an Atlas title. When I saw that Atlas flash across my screen, I thought I was in for something good. And it almost looked like I was in the first couple of minutes of this game. <laughs> and then I was like, wait a minute. I've seen this before. <laughs> yeah. I feel like. This is the poor man Strider. Yeah, it definitely is. It's it's worse than Strider, but it is very action packed. I mean, it is very twitchy gameplay. Something that I'm I'm not great at anymore, or ever that, was like, actually. But the whole like grab mechanic though on the surfaces and walls is like too clingy. Like it's so easy just to like get hooked on something when you're not trying to do that at all. Yeah, drove me nuts. Yeah. Yeah, I think that definitely threw me off a little bit where you would jump and then all of a sudden you're grabbing onto something. And you're like, no, that's not what I wanted to do. And you're trying to like jump off again. And that it was kind of clunky when it came to that. I was very surprised, you know, when it comes to the, the Super Nintendo, we're supposed to get just a little bit more details on certain things. And, uh, I, so I played as what was her name? She Shira she, Sheena Sheena Sheena, Sheena. Sheena. Yep. one of those and like they don't have any faces, which was really kind of surprising. It was just like a putty face. They probably got a little cl too close to the face of the saber at one point, and that's what happened. So. <laughs> she was yeah. beautiful up until her awful saber accident. Right. That's why you don't run with a saber. That's that's exactly right. It definitely looked more like a Genesis game more than a Super Nintendo game to me. Yeah, but. yeah, absolutely. It just, yeah, it definitely was not utilizing the horsepower. It felt like kind of a cheap cash in. I don't, I don't know if this was a Japanese game that got reworked to be something different in America or what. But yeah, it, a it was. Game. <laughs> yeah, it was very underwhelming. I will say. Uh, the only, I guess, once you get to the Mode Seven part, the laughable Mode Seven part <laughs> of that first boss or whatever, then yeah. You're like, okay, now we're back in the Super Nintendo. 
but it does I still enjoyed playing it though. Like it, it wasn't one of those things that I started playing and then I was like, ah, oh, this, this is crappy. I'm done. I mean, I was still, still pushing the buttons, still playing it and kind of enjoyed it, even though it was kind of lackluster. Yeah. I very much had the, Oh, this is crappy. I'm done. Uh, response to it. I maybe 10 really? minutes, probably not even. Oh no, I played for, I was just, quite a bit. it's just like with a uh, time slip. If I wanted to play Contra, I'd play Contra. If I wanted to play Strider, I'd play Strider. I mean, I guess if I was a kid and I didn't know any better and I only had Run Saber, I mean, I could, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a rental, potentially. We'll see. I just was off put by it pretty much immediately for some reason. I, I was more off put just because I my lack of skill in it. If I was better at it and really stuck to it, I think I would play a lot longer and enjoy it more. I think it'd be a really fun two player game. I think that's probably the the saving grace is you know mm-hmm. Strider was never two player co op and here you could do that. So yeah. that's cool. All right, move on to the next one. We'll go on to Nate's pick. Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers description is pretty big on this one. Also, uh, don't look now. Uh, because her hideousness is back and she's meaner and uglier than ever. This time Rita Repulsa is out to pulverize the Power Rangers once and for all, and she's brought all her nasty friends along to do the dirty work. But Jason, Trini, Billy, Kimberly, and Zach are at their morphin best with the awesome power of the Super NES machine on their side. That's okay. <laughs> uh, incredible graphics, amazing sound, and unbeatable action make this ba- the battle of good or evil an instant classic. Uh, the game, uh, this is just going to like what it features, but yeah, that's Power Rangers. It's Power Rangers. It's a beat 'em up. Um, I guess just like any beat 'em up, you're you're walking along, and what are the enemies called? Are they called putties back then? Putties, mm-hmm. yeah, putties. Yeah, a uh, ton of putties show up uh, in front of you, behind you, and then pretty simple to to punch them, beat them up. One of the things about the game that was, I guess, kind of frustrating is you're a Power Ranger. You should be <laughs> kind of powerful. And, and so it, some of these putties would take two, three hits, but they could all of a sudden just fling out a little sword, and all of a sudden you go flying across the screen because, you know, they're stronger than you, I guess. So that was kind of frustrating. I thought the game looked okay, uh, I could tell that they were Power Rangers, not when they're the actual human characters on the like choose screen. It's like, who are these people? <laughs> they're they're looking a little chunky. Well, they, they all look pretty good except poor Billy, who's like in those overalls and he's just like three times the size. Did you play as as Billy? Of uh, I was, I've played as all of them, but I usually play as Kimberly because she's got the ranged attack. So he had this like strange. Like Billy had this strange like punching move where it looked like he was covering his head. Yeah, he's yeah, he scared. Does. Yeah, they yeah, fully captured so the weird. fact that he's the wuss of the group. It's yeah. great. Right. Yeah. And, and he's definitely uh I mean none of them are chunky, but they sure made him and, and Zach a little little on the chunky side, which is kind of hilarious. Well and speaking of that, that transformation, they all use the same sprite when they transform. So Kimberly goes from like this slender little figure to like bulked up like beefy dude in a pink suit, which is just totally unsettling. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I it's good. I, I played for for quite a while and again you just don't feel super powerful. Um and, and some of the level layout was a little weird. Just because I've had, you know, other beat em ups that when you're walking so you kind of start walking on the sidewalk. You think that you could jump up on the buildings if there's an awning or even on the road, which is a little bit below you, but you have to stay on the sidewalk, I think. And that was just kind of limited the space, which was a little frustrating, but it's yeah. Power Rangers. I mean, that that's the big difference here, I think, is it's it's one plane, right? You can't go up and down. Right. right. There's no three-dimensional movement, which was the standard for this era when we're talking yeah. final fight and streets of rage like the fact that it existed on essentially an 8-bit wavelength limits you know what you can do with it yeah yeah and the putty the enemies were like some took one hit some, the others took three hits or four hits and that that was it there's no like variation in what they did or you know yeah, attacks, exactly really right it was just they're like, all they're all the same one yeah 
they would hit you or it'd take one hit, maybe two hits. But that was kind of, I don't know, that, that was kind of the boring part where there wasn't a variety of enemies. It was just putty after putty. But Yeah, and there's like no it's a real good beat em up. depth to the combat either. I mean, because everything is like a three-button combo. And then, I mean, really the only depth the game adds is like realizing that you need to break the combos to prevent the hitbacks so you can hit, kill an enemy by punch, punch down, change your attack, get back up, punch them. Otherwise they fly off screen and it takes three times longer. Mm -hmm. So you have to like learn how to avoid the powerful attacks so that you can dispatch enemies quickly, which is weird. And, and the first level is always just you as not a power ranger. It's right. just the normal human which is a weird choice i don't know i like it i i, I kind of disagree like i mean I, I agree that they're power rangers and they should feel more powerful but like i kind of like the start to every level where you are pretty weak and it's just kind of surviving to get to the point where you turn into the power ranger and transform and then yeah. you know your life gauge goes back up i mean you're still weak at that point too but yeah i i don't know i it, to me like this totally captures the feel of that first couple seasons of it, you know, Power Rangers in the U S and like the music's great. Like the presentation's cool. Some of the bosses, um, I think maybe all of the bosses are from that first run of the show over here. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I really like it. I, I think the thing that pisses me off the most is just that the lack of depth, you know, like you guys said, but then just the fact that there's no two player mode in a beat em up. Um, I actually asked for this game for Christmas back in the day and thought it was a two player game based on early screenshots cuz like there's that third stage where you're like crawling underneath a ledge and then a yellow dude with like a thing on his hand follows behind so i thought that was a screenshot of the yellow and pink rangers like going through a level together so when i opened this game up and looked in the back i'm like wait a minute one player like what what's going on here <laughs> i was pretty bummed uh, i mean it's still it's still a fine single player experience it just should be a two player game yeah i picked this game up at the 50% off sale uh, when we were down in Sioux Falls. And finally, you know, we had a Super Nintendo pick for Buy, Rent, Burn, and that kind of caused me to, I really want to play this game. I just haven't done it, so might as well do it now. And kind of glad I did. It is, it's an okay beat em up It's not great, but it, it's, it's okay. I kind of enjoyed how it was just a sit down and coast type of game. You know, it's almost like a Dynasty Warriors where you just mow through things. Yeah. It seems like this is pretty easy beat em up altogether. So I don't know. I I actually had a lot of fun playing it. You can sit through and beat it like really quickly. I actually just turned mm -hmm. it off for the sake of like I need to get to the next game. But what's interesting is like the last two stages. I think two or three. Um, it changes completely from a beat em up to uh from like a subpar beat em up to a very basic um uh, brawler. It's it's a it's a fighting game. At the end, it's one on one like you in the zord fighting on the moon against like monsters it's not like the whole move set changes everything changes and you do like two battles like that to finish the game out which is really weird and then you get actually a code after beating the game where you can punch in you can go back directly to those stages and enter a two-player mode where one of you is the monster and one of oh. you is the zord and then you, you can beat the shit out of your friend in a really cool. subpar beat em up so i used to huh. do that a lot i really like this game just saying so it's a burn. I get it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to burn it. I like this game a lot. All right. That's so how it goes. I think we know how I feel about that. We'll go on to mine. Uh, out to launch description here. Uh, enter the wacky world where the elements of international cuisine form a recipe for disaster. Uh, the ingredients you need to make delectable concoctions have run amok. You have to chase them down and bag them before they make mincemeat out of you. There's a little bit more, but I'll leave it. Uh, this feels like a Wisdom Tree game to me that just somehow didn't get a Wisdom Tree <laughs> labeling. It's kind of like Noah's Ark where I'm stacking like three zebras to like throw on the Ark, except I'm like bagging five meatballs or whatever. It's weird. Yes. It's a weird game. It's got some charm to it. It just lacks any charm in the fun or gameplay department, kind of. It was really weird. It was so weird. I, I think the meatball, like the meatball threw me off. That that was just a weird looking thing, like this brown blob just bouncing around the screen. 
Might just be uh, a hunk of beef. I don't know. I, I thought it was a, a potato. Hunk of beef. <laughs> oh, that could be. Oh, yeah. yeah, potato. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I hated this game. I really didn't like it. I was really hoping that it would be decent. Um, it's decent. Well, I, you know, it had kind of a map of similar to like Snow Brothers or something like that. Kind of looked like. You oh, so your initial your excitement to the took you in the wrong direction. I see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. I, I mean, that's the part that, that was annoying, that I was assuming it was something else. And, uh, no, you're just jumping on food or throwing something at them to make them sleep and then snatching them up in your net. Then you throw them in a cage and you walk out a door that pops out of nowhere. <laughs> What's yeah. not to love about that? It makes perfect sense. And the levels yeah. are timed, which is kind of annoying yeah. a little bit. <clears throat> Uh, especially starting out, I was trying to figure out, okay, what am I doing? Before you knew it, it was it was time up. And I like how you have to collect your net and like your speed boost thing at the beginning of every level. Like, can't I just start with the thing I need to play the game? Right. Why? Why is that a thing that I have to do? That's so dumb. Unless they change mechanics later on, I've never progressed far enough in the game to find that out. This definitely seems like a PC game, right? Sure. Like, it seems yeah. like it. Um. Either that, or it feels like a an early NES game. Yes, where you know it's more arcadey feeling that type of thing, but obviously sixteen bits. But I I don't know. I had a lot of fun playing it. I don't know why. Yeah, there's just like I kind of agree. There's just something kind of like the simplicity and the cuteness, because like the presentation I didn't mind, and the music was good, and I loved the stupid. Like I kept chuckling at the stupid like between level cutscenes where like shit's escaping from the fridge. I don't know why that was amusing to me. It was yeah, so every dumb. time. <laughs> right. But I'm like, hee hee, they got out of the fridge again. Time to get them. Yeah, I I agree though. Now that you mentioned the PC thing, um, this definitely feels like a PC developer ported something over. I really hope that was your reaction. Like I, I hope you like physically was like, all right. <laughs> oh, I was. Fridge. Yep. I like how the first screen is like a threat, like prepare for Switzerland. I'm like, Switzerland's never done anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> so weird. It's definitely a weird, weird game for sure. It yeah. Doesn't really fit in the SNES library. It's kind of an oddity. It's the true, I've never heard of it. It's the true sequel to Panic Restaurant. Yes. <laughs> kind of. Oh, well, that's a kind of part of where I thought it was going, or something similar to that. Or Burger Time tie-in. Yeah, maybe. yeah. yeah. Alright. Well, we've heard a little bit about all these games. I think we should uh, give our verdicts. We'll start off with Andy. Andy, what are your picks? Oh, this one was kind of tough because it was based on like how much fun I had, not the actual quality of the games, I think. Um... <laughs> I'm going to say for my buy is out to lunch because I played that one the most. Whoa. I Mike I, drop. All right. Yeah, I, I don't know why I liked it so much. Um, kind of the like juggling of keeping the cage closed with that other guy going down and opening your cage. I think he's a douche. Yeah. And, uh, and then also going out and getting the uh, vegetables and the food at the same time, like juggling that was, I don't know. It was kind of interesting. All right. But yeah, so that's the one that I played the most, probably had the most fun. Um, and then I, my rent is going to be Power Rangers because it was kind of just like a mindless, easy, just like mow through, you know, putties. I just love the putties that were one hit. You just like go through them and they just instantly zap. I don't know. That was just kind of uh, satisfying. Whereas most beat em ups then it was like it's crowd control or that. Yeah. To some extent it, it was, but it's a lot easier in this game. Um and then once you get your weapon it's it's pretty pretty simple after that. Um and then my my burn is gonna be Run Saber, and I think out of all of them, I think Run Saber is probably the best made game and the best designed game out of this even if it's like a complete ripoff of Strider. But to me, this is like playing Dark Souls now. It's just like, I respect it, but it's not the game that I sit down and, and 
and enjoy at this point. As a kid, uh, it would, this whole list would be completely reversed. I think <laughs> I'd be like out to lunch. No, thank you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, that uh, you threw me for a loop there. That's not. I didn't think anyone was picking out to lunch, but I'm glad somebody did. Um, Nate, how about you? Yeah, I I, uh, I enjoyed Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I I think that it was just it's not a great beat 'em up, like we said. It's not excellent by any means, but it, it's it's decent and. Like Andy said, it's kind of mindless where you don't have to think about it too much. It's not giving you a big challenge. And that kind of sets itself apart from a lot of the other beat em ups where it's they're frustrating and you can't get too far without going through lives. But you can mow through a decent amount of uh, enemies. And, and so I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, was great. So that's definitely going to be my buy. Now, my rent, this was very difficult for me. I. I think I like Run Saber more than I liked Out to Lunch. So um, Run Saber would be my rent. It just has some cool mechanics and, and some uh, uh, interesting gameplay. It's not, again, a perfect game. I think all of these games aren't like amazing titles that were. It, it's very easy to to pick. They're just kind of they're just there. They're they're just whatever and so my burn is gonna be out to lunch because i didn't get the game i didn't really understand it i probably didn't enjoy it as much as andy did apparently <laughs> um but i didn't hate it either it's just it was just i don't know it was just a weird game and i wasn't too excited about it all right <clears throat> well no surprise here i am buying Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I still own my childhood really? copy. Wow. Um, I love it. I love that game. I agree. It's not great. But considering it's like a Bandai made game in that era, that's pretty good. Um, and I just, yeah, the just the on rails kind of like sit down, progress, you know, due to the lack of challenge and the simplicity makes it a fun sit down and blow through kind of game. So I'm buying that. Big fan of that from my childhood. So the nostalgia is playing a huge part in that too um probably more than anything uh my rent i'm gonna rent out to lunch i actually as much fun as i made of it like i kind of like the game like it it's weird it's not a great game but it makes me smile uh playing it for some weird reason and the gameplay just pick up and go is kind of you know like andy said it's it fits my play style these days and i'm just gonna burn run saber because I don't know, I just couldn't get over that it was Strider and not as good of a Strider. So, like, that soured my whole PlayStation on that. I, I did kind of enjoy when I got to the end of that first stage and saw, like, the shitty Mode 7 in work, and I was like, this is ridiculous. Uh, but that didn't save it for me. So, yeah, I'm burning Run Saber. Which is I cannot also believe the most you expensive. bought out to lunch. Really? How much is it? Run Saber is like a hundred dollar game. Oh no, thank you. Strider's like five <laughs> bucks on the Genesis. I'll take that. Yeah. Really? My goodness. Wow. Atlas Tax. Yeah, that's true. Very true. But then again, I don't know if I've ever seen Out to Lunch. Maybe I, I haven't paid attention to it, but just the copy I own is the only one I've ever come across. Yeah. I, uh, the only reason I even knew about it was back in the day when I used to watch a lot of continue, they did an episode on that. And then that, uh, what was his name? The guy who Dom, who was initially on that left, you know, and they played it. Cause like, that was one of Dom's like favorite games. Like, he just loved it. <laughs> so they're like <laughs> playing it. They're like, I have no idea. Like, why did he think this is great? <laughs> <laughs> so when I saw it at a pawn shop, for, like, I don't know, 10 bucks, I grabbed it and I played it a few times. It's. It definitely stays on the shelf. I treat it very much like the rental that I, I put it in um, in this episode, but yeah, it's something. Good something? No. <laughs> and okay, something? Sure. Another Byron Burn in the books.
Okay, let's move on to the meat of the podcast. Um, and as I mentioned at the top, it has been um, almost a month, probably a little bit, maybe even a little bit longer since we've done a proper episode and talk um, just kind of about what's going on in gaming. So I'm going to do a quick recap of some notable things in the last few weeks that we should at least pinpoint here. We don't have to get into, but that have happened uh, since we've recorded last. Uh, so the Game Boy became a game man, turned 30. Uh, Labo mm-hmm. VR came out. Apparently it's not god awful. We'll find out. Uh, Apex Legend, nobody cares anymore, I guess. Uh, the Xbox Sad Edition came out, cost $250, which is the same as the full fledged <laughs> Xbox version. So good job, Microsoft. Uh, Ninja is Time's most influential people. Great call. Uh, Borderlands 3 came out with what, what might have been like one of the most cringeworthy and failed train wrecks of an unveiling for any game in recent history and uh capcom loves its fans so much they're selling us their logo with 16 roms two sticks and uh, a hefty price tag so (laughs) we are caught up that's everything that's happened so we were only gone a month it's been about a month yeah so much things so many things things like that i feel like uh, we we've been gone longer it's been a while. It's also been like a slow news cycle for gaming for whatever reason. I yeah. Know. Oh, we forgot the big one. One of the big ones was PlayStation was basically out there saying what it was. The next PlayStation was. Were they talking about it? I was, I was just too caught up in the Xbox sad. I mean, I've been nothing but sad. <laughs> yeah. Since I came out. yeah. Apparently what the, the new PlayStation can do, it's probably going to cost a thousand dollars. So. I don't think they can sell a console for over five, though. They made that mistake <laughs> no. once, so. Yeah, I don't think it's going to do everything. Either. They're claiming it will, but. Right. They like to blow smoke. You know, you got to got to do that at this, time, at this point in time. You don't have anything to show us, so yep. you just lie. You show us a demo of NAC 3 and just jaws will drop. <laughs> uh <sighs> You're giving am, too many people's hopes up on that. <laughs> yeah, everyone's been dreaming of this. Um, I was happy uh, the the recording of this podcast lined up perfectly. We are the day after the unveiling of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, number one on trending, three hundred and fifty thousand dislikes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a freaking uh, i can't believe how great this movie is going to be um i just feel bad for the pokemon movie at this point how can this compete i mean pokemon obviously is going to flop uh with the sheer <laughs> awesomeness that we've seen with this blue sky trailer uh of sonic the hedgehog the movie i was very optimistic with this movie why very optimistic well you know sometimes when it comes to like initial art or just very basic trailers not like the trailer that we just saw when those come out and people start freaking out i mean they change so much and so i was like okay you know this this isn't so bad we'll just see what happens and maybe they'll make some adjustments we don't know exactly what sonic looks like then the trailer drops a nightmare (laughs) it looks horrible it looks oh i can't even so frustrating to watch that trailer the whole time i was just like why would and then just that? set the whole thing to gangster's paradise <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. who, who did this why <laughs> why not uh, at what point at what point do you like jim carrey at what point are you like this isn't gonna be good at what, what I like- point did he say that <laughs> I like how he was like the highlight, like when the villain is the highlight of the trailer. And it wasn't even like Jim Carrey playing Dr. Robotnik. It was Jim Carrey just like being Jim Carrey. Like I felt like Skinny it was Jim just a combination Carrey. of every role he's ever done. And it was still entertaining. But when that is like, when you walk away and you're like, oh well, yeah, Jim Carrey's probably going to be okay in this. But like Sonic is just oh, so disturbing. Like when it, when, when I first saw like the first screenshots of what Sonic was, I was like, yeah, disappointed. Like th- that's pretty bad. But it was like, okay, they're trying to make it like he's going to fit into a real world. Okay, right. Like okay, whatever. They'll make it work. Then the the trailer comes out and he's like, oh, he's an alien. 
Right. He's, he, yeah. he came to, yeah. to to the Earth. Like, well, then why couldn't he just look like normal Sonic then if he's an alien? <laughs> and I'd like to point out that, like, the guy who is, like, the male protagonist uh, paired off against Sonic was in another movie called Hop, where it was a fucking Easter bunny <laughs> yep. that doesn't fit in with the real world, but it still looked like the fucking animal it was supposed to be. And then, like, did nobody, when they were casting them, be like, oh, yeah, this is, like, the dude from Hop. Maybe we shouldn't put him in with Sonic 2 because it's kind of the same movie. Nobody nobody got that. You know who Sonic looks like? He looks like the original Jumanji when that kid turns into like Monkey Boy. That's what <laughs> yes. Sonic looks like. Oh it's terrifying. Gosh, it's the stuff perfect. of nightmares. It is so bad. So- I, Sega has to just be fuming. Like, There's no way that this is good PR. It, I, mean, I think it's, it's like the one of the marketing people, like the people that were making the money or the movie they sent numerous emails asking for the the brand guide from the marketing department, and the marketing department didn't get those emails. So then they're like, "Well, fuck it, we just got to make this movie. We're gonna make it however we want." They were in the spam the brand guide. folder. <sighs> I just cannot believe how it, it's one thing to take liberties with a character to adapt it to something like this, but to just take it and turn it into this like it's chilling. I mean, it's unnatural looking. Nothing. It, it's it's so cringy, so cringy. Well, well two then- things. <laughs> One of the like when you have, I mean, we are just going to town on this thing, but I mean, when you have a cartoon and even a, just a video game character that everybody knows this is what he looks like, and you don't even try, you're like, okay, we got the blue color right, we got that. <laughs> I mean that that's really not not a good thing. And I think the million dollar question here is is this game going to get lumped up with the Super Mario Brothers movie? Are, are those going to be like the epitome of video game? Movies? Well, and I think that's the thing that's just going to absolutely bury this is that like we are we're 10 days out from the Pikachu movie, or like Pikachu, Detective Pikachu, Pokemon movie. Like I had, I, I'm not a Pokemon fan. I had no expectation. Just like I tempered my expectations for the Sonic trailer. And what I've seen in like, we're on the third trailer now. They just dropped the new trailer today for the Pokemon movie. It looks fantastic. And does, do the Pokemon look more realistic for the environment they're in? Yeah, but they also did it in a way that doesn't make them look like they're going to pop out of your closet and eat your flesh off of you uh pikachu still looks like pikachu yes and then to have this come out like i don't know how blue sky wasn't like oh no this cannot come out this year like how did nobody put a stop to this let's go right (laughs) let's send it out so they've guaranteed like the thing that i kind of took away from this is like i don't know if any of you guys saw like the recent um woody woodpecker movie that i assume got a theatrical release somewhere but it kind of went straight to netflix this looks like that this looks like a budget pos like okay we got a license we paid five bucks for nobody cares about let's make put out a movie but you don't you don't do that and make this into like a full feature length thing that you're touting and rolling out with a november a november release date like it is going to just crash and burn yeah i don't see how it how it could and just the whole story like the quills like the electric quills like what is that there's no there's nothing in sonic lore or anything about something like that so it's i don't the only way this could be worse is if they had done like the same like (laughs) character conversion like envisioning and then just paired this it was like a buddy comedy with sonic and like it even more disturbing big the cat that's the only thing they could have done to make this worse i think and I might have almost preferred that because then they would have committed whole hog to like the worst parts of the Sonic universe. <laughs> Are they going to do like the Sonic cinematic universe where they have like the oh Knuckles God. movies comes after this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can only hope. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I I think like as frustrated as I am with this whole thing, I think the best part is just like how comically awful this is for a movie with a massive budget and jim like this is jim carrey's like death nail like this is it <laughs> for him like jim carrey wasn't like riding too high as it was in 2019 jim carrey is not gonna be doing very well i don't think no he's getting a paycheck on that one yeah 
So uh, we're we're all going together, right? Like we'll do a yeah, yeah. Premiere. I have to go, but yeah, on I the big too. screen with the lounge chairs and everything, so I'll I do, can sleep. I'll wait till it hits the dollar theater. <laughs> it should be there about November. What what day is this coming out? November the first. I don't know. It'll, it should be there by the third. So let's move the the podcast. Like we'll do a live podcast at the movie because yeah. no one else will be in there. You're right. So we'll we just, just sit in there and just be be those guys yelling at the screen and giving you a play by play. It's actually not a bad idea. It's a mystery Maybe science should... theater version. <laughs> That'd yeah. be pretty good. Oh, my blood is boiling now from this, this <laughs> conversation. I also, um, another debut of some very exciting news that I think was either this morning or possibly yesterday. Uh, the original team behind Earthworm Jim has reunited that we are getting a new Earthworm Jim game slated for a 2020 release, I believe. Maybe they didn't give a release date. Um, it is coming out. To only the biggest and best consoles around. That is right. It will be out for the Intellivision Amico. <laughs> this is awful when you say that. Ugh. I think this has a better chance of getting made than the actual console. I just hope that I'll get a chance to play it on something that will actually exist at some point. I'm just excited that it's not a Kickstarter or some dumb shit like that, right? Like, yeah, that's true. Well, yes, it's just yeah. Because I thought for sure that was coming down the pipe that they'd bring that back as a Kickstarter. I think this at least has the potential to turn some heads for what Intellivision is doing, assuming that it actually comes out at some point. But I don't know. What a weird announcement. I don't think we'll see it. Uh, yeah, probably not. Yeah. I, I don't think the console will come out. I think maybe the game could exist on other platforms after they scrap in television. But they, I haven't heard any news other than that initial push, right? This is like right. the second time I've even heard of that console. Yeah, same. Tommy's a mysterious man. Yeah, well, he worked on Earthworm Jim. Yeah, he did so the So that's part design. of this deal, yeah. Right. I'm sure. I'm I don't even know what you'd want in a Earthworm Jim game anymore because I feel like meme games are just flooded on Steam now. Like that's those type of games are all over the place. But yeah, but what do people want with a new Toe Jam and Earl? I didn't get. I mean, what do you, what do you do in there? But people seem excited about it. I think that was pretty true to what that first game was, and there's not a lot of games quite like that. I mean, there's a lot of roguelikes, but not in that 90s style. I don't know. I mean, last time I checked, there weren't a whole lot of uh, action platformers starring uh, worms. So, I mean, you could make the argument that... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe that genital jousting game. Does that count? Oh, God. That is one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen. But... <laughs> yep. It's still fun to watch somebody stream it, though. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I I was a huge fan of Earth from Jim, and then going back to it, I realized how bad the platforming actually is in that game. Yeah, I, I kind of always felt like that too. I played those when I was growing up, but it it was definitely more of a marketing like push and attitude and like art style than it was a good game. Mm -hmm. I, I have a hard time going back to him as well, but I don't know. It's if you're gonna try to pull off something as cockamamie as making a new console at least they're trying to do it with a game that might actually turn heads so yeah i i i still though i agree with nate i don't think we'll see see it but you never know we never thought we'd see a sonic movie here it is well there there was an animated sonic movie a few years ago that was way better looking, but I don't want. No, I don't want to go back there. Too much <laughs> sense of anger. Too much. I don't. I don't want to take you to a dark place. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I uh, I don't know if you guys have been watching. I started reading up on the news. Uh, the initial reviews have come in for that Oculus Quest, which I didn't know they were working on. 
Um, pretty intrigued by that. Um, kind of mad at myself for buying a PlayStation VR when I did, because we're like just a month away from this coming out, which seems way better. It's 400. It's standalone. Zero wires. Comes with two hands-free controller or you know, wireless controllers. Um, it has the ability to allow you to do room scaling setup, something that has only existed with like HTC Vive or like higher end versions of the Oculus. Um, basically allows you to, through a forward facing camera, kind of like have a pass through into your VR screen. So you can use that to then like essentially chalk line the boundary for the room that you're going to be setting up in. Um, so a lot of really intuitive simple ways to get into the VR setup um, and then the whole cords free being able to put it in this little carrying case and just tuck it away when you're not using it and it's it's retailing for $3.99 um, <laughs> and it has Beat Saber which I mean what well, let's just start calling VR Beat Saber at this point because that's really <laughs> the only reason anyone wants one and I just was kind of like damn it like this this sounds like the thing I want and I've just invested into this thing for my playstation that's a convoluted mess of wires works okay sometimes if the little light isn't affecting like the blinky ball thing in my hand and i don't know i i guess it, had i been aware i probably would not have gone in on the playstation so i'm kind of bummed I mean, i'm pretty excited to see how this does and what games come out i think from here on out though it's going to be just like that every year there's going to be like, oh, here's the new one that's a little bit better. And you're going to be like, oh, I should, you know, it's kind of like smartphones. Right. Where there's always like that one thing that you're like, oh, I should have waited one more year, you know? Yeah, but nobody's done like wireless though, right? Like nobody's done full room scale, no cords. You're free to play. V like, because that's what yeah. always sucks me out of it is like, you know, when you're screwing around with the PlayStation 1, especially like you feel that cord trailing either over your shoulder or down your back and. Yeah, bugs me. And room room scale is definitely hundred percent different, you know. Right. Than PlayStation. Yes. So I recently, and you guys might know this, I recently picked up a PlayStation VR. So I have now joined the elite group of virtual reality <laughs> enthusiasts. Uh, and you know all the issues that you guys are talking about, I have not dealt with i have not had any of those issues happen to me i've been extremely happy with it and uh i mean yeah there, there's things that i don't like i don't love the cables uh but i don't regret like all of my decision <laughs> of course you regret a little bit spending that kind of money on something like that but um uh, yeah i haven't had any issues at all the like the room spacing and uh yeah, the light sensor stuff, I haven't had any of that issue, which is, I guess, kind of good. Do you play downstairs? Yeah. Okay. So you don't have natural light coming in or anything? Well, I have a little bit on my side windows that come into the basement. but You've obviously had to have like one or two times over like in a game where the control janked out. and I mean, if you no, haven't, haven't yet, haven't like it's issues. going to happen. I mean, there's just no way that that will forever sure. work for you. you yeah, you've never had like the hand float away or anything like that. No, wow, never. Okay. Yeah. Of course, I mean, I've been playing Beat Saber a ton, and I haven't really done much outside of Beat Saber. I, I did the, you know, what is it? PS VR Worlds that uh, Ryan kind of introduced me mm -hmm. to, uh, and then I started Borderlands Two, which was a pack in on that set. Yeah, it's it's been good, but I don't see myself playing much outside of Beat Saber. One thing that I am kind of excited about on that, uh, I know to get us a little off subject, but um, London Heist, which is in the PSVR world, I found that game actually kind of fun, where especially like the shootouts and stuff like that. And so uh, at the end of this month, the actual like an actual game from that is going to be coming out, which I'm kind of excited about. Yeah, that's I forget what the name of that is, but it looks really good, doesn't it? Yeah, I, it does. It's that mobster, yeah. um, I guess, shoot em up in a way. It's, yeah, I can't remember the exact name of that. I think I sent it to Ryan. But, 
yeah, I'm kind of excited to maybe check that out, but it's Beat Saber Machine. Yeah. They did uh, say that it's going to work on the next PlayStation. So, I mean, that's encouraging where they're not like, where they're usually like, here's your accessory that's going to die the next time we put a piece of hardware. Buy on. a new one. Yep. Especially for Sony, because like anything, it's not like the main piece of hardware they usually let just fucking disappear or yep. die a slow, painful death. Yep. Poison point in case, like the Vita, like. They pretty much <laughs> dropped that and walked away from it. And then it survived on its own somehow for yeah. four years after that. But, Thanks, yeah. Limited Run Games. <laughs> yeah. Blood and Truth is the name of the yeah, game. Yeah, that's right. Blood and yeah. Truth. Yeah, I guess, like, I just... I enjoy VR. Um, I just... I think, like, the Oculus Quest is, like, the version of VR that I would have wanted. Because, like, it is just a novelty. Like, I don't sit down and play it very often. Like, on when I'm in the mood, I do. But it'd sure be nice just to have it and stick it away. And then just the added control, too, of, like, room scaling. Like, how much more precise that is than what the PlayStation right. VR does. Yeah. Like, I, I'm kind of... I mean, like in nowadays, it's the perfect option to have wireless everything. Right. So, of course, that's going to be way more attractive. Yes, and nobody's come this close to doing anything this good with the price point that they're at, so. It's good. I'm excited. I won't buy it because I have the PlayStation VR, so I'll stick with my shitty jank VR, but I wish I had the Oculus Quest. I could see that being kind of janky, though, too. Like, the first version of a wireless, there's going to be, like, some weird leg issues, I think, that it's going to be like, oh, get you sick, but... Maybe, yeah. not. Maybe. I think PlayStation will have to do something very similar with the next revision. Yeah. To stay competitive. Oh, I did. Uh, speaking of VR, I did finally like take your advice and watch a 3D Blu-ray. That's good. Like that's like I watched. I watched Tron Legacy, um, which I that's love that movie, one. and I'd watched that in 3D in the theaters, and the effect was ten times better than in the theater effect. Uh, yeah, it was it was great. I, I mean, the only problem is is like I couldn't sit down through more than forty minutes of the movie because like I'm getting sweaty and yeah, like, I'm sitting on my couch with this dumb thing on my face. Uh, but like, I don't know. I guess if they made like three D shorts, sure. But it was very cool. I mean, looked way better than I expected. Uh, I'm kind of jealous about that. I want to try it out. I haven't seen any of those movies out and about, but I'll have to you keep can, my eyes. You can borrow a my copy more. of Tran. Yeah. It's good. We can co-op watch that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I liked the scene where he was getting his armor put on and those pretty programs were helping him out in their outfits. Looked nice in 3D. <laughs> Looking nice. Uh -huh. It really popped off the screen. Yeah. I think the only one I've watched is Gravity, which is a pretty good one to watch. In Gravity? 3D too. What's Gravity? Uh, those guys that are up, like, fixing the space station, and then, like, debris oh, hits it. Sure. Yeah. Do they make... Never mind. Not not gonna do that. Nope. Yes, they do. <laughs> I'll know where, I know exactly where you're going. I don't know, I know about exactly where you're going. Yes. Alright. Just gotta be physical media I can buy. In, in the real reason you wanted the Oculus, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Instead of PlayStation. Well, it's, it's wireless. <laughs> so, so I can do it in a closet while no one's looking. <laughs> so so this is going to sound completely stupid, but with um, the 3D movies, they're just 3D Blu-rays. That's all they are, right? Yep. There's nothing special about them for the system. Nope. I mean, you can watch them on a 3D TV, too. It just looks super good. It, I will say, like, uh, the lower resolution of the screen inside the PlayStation VR definitely shows more in those. Uh, it doesn't look as good as if you're just watching the movie on 4K and Blu-ray. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of... I mean, it is kind of like this amazing experience, though, right? Because it almost feels like I am in the movie theater, like, at this big, massive screen. Like, I kind of have to yeah. look side to side to see the whole image. It's just, like, this weird, and it's empty kinda vacuum. Grainy. Yeah, and yeah. it's like I'm alone in a theater. This is strange. Like I don't know what's happening here. There it's are cool. a couple like free shorts on on the PSN store that are more like just like animated movies that are like sure. ten minutes long. Yeah, I think I saw one that had like Oprah Winfrey voicing something in it. Even it was I can't remember what it was called. It looked like a kids show. Yeah, 
but those you can just kind of like look around it's all the way around you you know but you're just in a sure stationary spot yeah no it was a cool bonus feature to check out like if you've got the vr already it's definitely not my favorite way to watch a movie but pretty cool experience just sit down with you know, whole family and say, okay, we're going to watch this together. You're all by you yourself. Can. You just have to describe the movie in great detail. <laughs> it's so good, guys. It's so good. It's so real. Let me watch. No. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the bummer about it. But, yeah. Yeah, I like how... So, <laughs> I just want to recap, too. Like, Nate buying PlayStation VR. So, he waits until after we've, like gone to mgc as if he hasn't spent enough money and then like on a random saturday he tends me a picture of like best buy the shelf like is this a good deal i'm like dude that is literally the a- actual retail price of the thing that you were looking to buy i'm like no that is not a good deal and then five minutes later he's like bought it I'm like okay <laughs> cool but you did get them to match him. a deal right yeah i got them to match the like online bundle deal yeah even though they didn't have any in stock and so which is like the whole basis for the price matching like because it has to be in stock so yeah oh. no this Sweet guy let me do him. it so nice good for you gave him the wink wink yeah no, it's a good pickup. Yeah. Now I look like I'm, I look like an idiot, just like you guys <laughs> dancing around. We're like, oh, I'm so awesome at this, and you see yeah. a video, and yeah, have you seen a video of you doing it? Yeah. Yeah. So th- the number one rule, we all set it up. Everyone was excited, and actually, my wife was pushing for this. She thought this would be something fun to get for the family, and she heard about Beat Saber and thought it would be an awesome game to get, and. So this was really her doing. She was pushing for this. And the number one rule, just probably like you guys, was nobody's taking videos of any of this. Is everybody <laughs> clear? And everyone's like, yep, I put the headset on. Phones get whipped out. Oh, my, yeah. my daughter grabbed her tablet. <laughs> She's holding it up. Yeah. And, oh, That's everybody's videoing? rule, and it's immediately no. broken. No. Yeah. As soon as you go into VR, you are you are subject to anything. That is the fact. Yeah, I ran my wife through the shark simulator right away. Did she freak out? Yes, she was pissed. (laughs) She was not happy with that. She had to take a break a couple times and take the headset off. And I was like, it's not that bad. You know, try to talk to her. I should have filmed you doing that. You freaked out a little bit, too. I did freak out. I don't do well with with those kind of surprises. Cool. No, well, now what we got to do is we all got to download Rec Room and then create a our own room so we can hang out in there and do podcasty things. Yeah. We'll set up a Rec Room. Could do some streaming, yeah. <laughs> we can rent a Rec Room. <laughs> yep. I love it. I like it a lot. It'll be dedicated only to Sonic the Movie talk and fan hype. <laughs> well, Sonic 3D blu-ray is gonna be awesome so it's gonna be good yeah it's like those hairs are coming right at you gross the pubic hairs <laughs> yeah so uh there was some news that just broke here tonight Ooh, cutting edge that epic games the uh creators of fortnite have bought and the developers of rocket league and i'm guessing the game Rocket League. So that's kind of a big get, I would say. That's yeah, it's surprising. It is surprising because it's not like that dev is hurting for money, I would imagine. I mean, Rocket League has still been ever popular. Um, maybe not as much as it once was, but it's still got to be making money. If I was that company, like they, I mean, the, the story goes that they basically made Rocket League before they made Rocket League, right? The first game was kind of soccer mm. cars. Super <coughs> acrobatic rocket car, like something weird like that. Yeah. So, like, they kind of had the right place, right time for Rocket League to take off, and then they're kind of staring down the barrel of, like, okay, what's our next next project? If I were them, I would be like, well, I'd, I wouldn't have a lot of faith that we're going to nail it all the park the next time either. So... Right, because like for you, sale and take the money. I always watch, like I always think back to Rocket League and that um, 
like uh well i can't remember what the series was was like smosh that did like realistic trailers they did one on rocket league and it was like the game that nobody would have given a shit about had it not been free on psn like, it's totally true right like they caught that at the perfect time it's nuts i always wonder like a, a small dev like that too like what they think about doing a games as a service model right like it isn't some of the creativity and like fun in, I would imagine game development is that you do move on to something new after a long development cycle. Like it's gotta be weird to put years into something and then just continue to tweak it over another set of years. Yeah. I don't know. Just to fix different things and put different patches in. Yeah. That just doesn't seem like it'd be fun. Right. And you know, it's just people are, it's just people yelling and complaining all the time. Yeah. Because they know that game can change from there. It's a big win on Epic's part, though. I mean, that's a good good acquisition. I just don't know how I feel about Epic being at the reins in that scenario. but Well, they took it off the Steam store, or they're going to. So, <laughs> of course. That's going to piss a lot of people off. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that whole... That's kind of ridiculous, too. That whole... Um, comment from like Epic's games coming out like we will stop buying exclusives if Steam like matches our like revenue share. <laughs> I'm like, uh huh, sure you are. Yeah. Like what a bunch of smoke. You would not. We would put our games back on Steam if they did this. It's like no, you would not. Who launches their own company store and then puts it on <laughs> somebody else's service? It doesn't make any sense. You're on the same platform. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I didn't think I'd ever see the day where PC got to the point where they were like exclusives. <laughs> right. That was the whole point of the PC. But... Strange times we live in, I tell you. Post Sonic. Yeah. Everything going to hell in Okay, moving on to the fail bag, where we answer 20-year-old questions from old gaming magazines as if they were addressed to us. Um, I'm starting out here. In an old Nintendo Power, number 75, um, they must have just launched a online section on their website for Nintendo Power. And they got a couple uh, messages in talking about like what they thought about it. And I love Aaron. Uh, he writes in, he says, I think you shouldn't waste too much time on the online service because many fans don't have computers. I mean, this is probably right around what the launch of 64 is. I'm guessing when this issue came out. Yeah, a little bit so, before that, I think. Virtual probably Boy, probably. Fairly accurate then at that point. The internet will never amount to anything. Just stick to the magazine. Come on. Works out well for them. Print ads is where it's at. <laughs> Although now their online service still looks like it's uh, from that era. so <laughs> That's true. You don't even know what's going on. Yep. I'm just excited that you two are going to be picking up the online service soon. So. I already have it. Oh, did you use your Twitch? Yeah, the Twitch thing. I still haven't been on it though. <laughs> so I don't have it still. Yeah. I figure you'll both be getting it when Mario Maker 2 comes out. 
because I don't know what you could possibly I do suppose. with that game if it wasn't online. Like, oh, I'm going to play the five levels I made. That oh suck. my gosh, I didn't think about that. That game, that whole game is made to sell that service, isn't it? 100%. Oh. What, when's the release date on that again? June something? Yeah. I won't conform. No, I won't. <laughs> Fact. You got to share levels, Nate. I'll share anything. Spoiler, 99% of, of mine will be penis-shaped. That's, that's how I design levels. Well, I, look, I look forward to platforming on that. Yes. Side note, I'm like really excited about Dreams. I don't know if you've seen any of that. No. Dreams, Dreams on PS4. It's like, it's like the little big planet on steroids. Where people you are making make your own this. environments and stuff, or what? Yeah, people are like making whole games in in that. It's, it's pretty insane. I'm excited. I like yeah. how we got here from a from the <laughs> Nintendo from the question. internet. Yeah, I've already derailed the fail bag. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> uh, Melissa has a counterpoint, kind of. Uh, what do you think of the new? What do I think of the new online service? Well, it's only it's cool only in a few ways, except a few that annoy me. For example, you need to cover more of the internet. Not everyone gets AOL. You should mention monitor some of the many Nintendo related Usenet groups on the net, especially since AOL costs a great deal of money. Other than that, it's nice that you've joined us on the net, however, belatedly. But, like I said, it looks awesome. I'd go there any other day, or what? You just got to collect those AOL discs. Yeah, exactly. It's not that. It's not that expensive. I got them free all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I shit you guys now. When I was going through stuff for our game exchange a couple months back, I pulled out my big box of like magazines, like EGMs, like Game Informers. I started going through them to like thin out ones. I found like. No less than three, like still shrink wrap sealed AOL like demo discs. Like why <laughs> they ended up in these magazines and why I'd held onto them for like twenty years, I have no idea. But it just made me laugh. I just recall the days of like walking into like Walmart and there was like that entry like bin, which is now like the discount bin, just full of those things. The good yeah. old days. Now kids are like, what is AOL? Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty sure Nintendo, like the equivalent of Nintendo related Usenet groups in today's, like Nintendo's not looking at that either. <laughs> right. <laughs> so fun. That's where Bowsette is. <laughs> <laughs> They've officially sanctioned her, haven't they? Uh, <laughs> it's their new uh, CEO's wife. <laughs> Moving to uh, number 80. This whole uh, section was about different uh, sequels that you would like to see on Nintendo platforms. And some of these are pretty interesting because they've still not happened. <laughs> uh, Jeremy says he'd like to see a sequel to Mario Paint with many upgrades to the original options and many new archives such as color mix, what? new animation choices, and possibly a few move... Uh, a few more different beats to the awesome music option would be great. Well, I agree that it's absurd that we've gone through like three or four generations of like touchscreen based Nintendo hardware now, and we haven't seen it some kind of spinoff. I have never once had the thought that I would like a sequel to Mario freaking paint. Maybe I'm crazy. No, you're not crazy. You're absolutely spot on. I like the, mu I'd like the music thing. I wish they would make more notes. That would be cool. Well, they did that. It's called Labo Piano. True, I guess. Yeah, There's a couple there of very annoying uh, choices that they made in that piano thing. but Like the cat and the dog stuff? The, yes. <laughs> yeah, I used to just string that together to make like the most obnoxious thing I could. <laughs> like, like, that was my only joy. That and the fly swatter game, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> Mike says, uh, I've got a great idea for a game based on a movie. It stars John claude Van Damme and Raul Julia. It's called Street Fighter. It's action-packed and... Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> this is a movie? made that game. 
they yeah they, they made the game then they made the movie then they made a fighting game based on the movie for the sega right saturn yep, yep. it's pretty not great yep a uh, robert he's looking for uh he was building his he was building with my legos and thought that you could make a lego video game like sim city you would pay small amounts of money to buy different bricks to build a hotel or a house. Well, Minecraft will be coming in another 12 years. <laughs> it's true. And it costs like 15 bucks when it launches. Yeah. I'm surprised that Lego hasn't done something like that. They have like, Lego uh, World. Minecraft, have they? Yep, Lego World. Well, I mean, they've done the. Not the movie games or, or anything like that. But no, Lego Worlds can... is literally what it's called, and it's Minecraft with Legos. It's oh, it's kind I of take it all back. Minecraft. There's not much crafting in it, right? If no, I remember you, right. You can craft and like alter your landscapes and stuff, like after a while. Sure. I did not know that. It's bad. I'm sorry. They did it bad. I uh like Michael Jackson bad? What's that? <laughs> like Michael Jackson bad? <laughs> Ooh. Maybe not quite that bad. There's two different there's two different bad. bads with Michael Jackson, so the good bad <laughs> and bad bad. I I would play another Moonwalker though. That was a cool game. I've never played that game. I like the arcade, I think, more than I like the Genesis version, but they're both bonkers. I don't know if I've played the arcade one. Oh, I have it. I need to play it. It's alright. It's exact I mean he seems like he had direct input on what he wanted that game to be. And it, it's him. <laughs> uh, Transforming into a robot for some yeah. reason. <laughs> Side note, didn't he do some music for some Sega games? Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Right. They took it, all credit away, though. Or he walked away. I don't know. It's not really clear, but yeah. He was a big fan of Sonic and Sega and... They just kind of let him do whatever he wanted because he's Michael Jackson. <laughs> uh, Brian says, I would really like to see another or a second Blaster Master game. The NES version was awesome, but the graphics capabilities are way outdated. Well, technically, there was a second Blaster Master on the Sega Genesis. Yeah. And then wait till the Switch comes out and you get two more. I guess the first one was technically a remake, but this new one is full up straight oh, sequel. Oh, it's a sequel to the first one? Yeah. Well, like, because like Zero was like, it was a new game, but it was also kind of like a reimagining. But yeah. this new new one that just came out is like a straight, like all original I mean, it's still Blaster Master, but yeah. Well, they had to wait till they had enough graphical hardware power to make something look like Blaster Mar Master <laughs> Zero, right? <laughs> like it would look on the Super. Yeah, it's, it, it <laughs> actually does feel like the Super Nintendo sequel to Blaster <laughs> Master. <laughs> like they definitely went with that style. Yeah. Have you played the second one yet? No, I haven't ever no. finished the first one. Like, I really liked it. I just I don't feel like I need more of that right now. But yeah, there's a good sale on it. Yeah, I heard good I, things. I, I like the first one a lot. It, the checkpointing just sucked in it. Yeah. Although at least it had them. Yeah. Uh, Dave, he says, I've always thought an interesting game would be an alternate video game universe. The basic idea is to create a game in which characters from one game are trapped in another and they have to make their way back to the real video game world in which they belong. Kingdom Hearts? Yeah. Pretty much. Super Smash Brothers Brawl? <laughs> kind of. wreck -It Ralph? Yep. <laughs> I don't know if that one qualifies for a couple of reasons, but maybe. It does. Okay. Fact. I think if Nintendo got really more, a lot more comfortable, which they are, they're starting to put like Zelda and Animal Crossing into Mario Kart now. Like they yeah, can that's make, true. They can make a lot of different genres with all of their own characters in one thing, besides Smash Brothers. 
Yeah, they. Uh, that's that's a good idea. Like I could see, it'd be cool if there was more. Like I would love to see Smash Brothers is obviously as close as we've gotten to like just like completely out of worlds of game characters but it'd be cool to just see some like really off the wall stuff like, i thought that nes remix was going to be that but it was not right yeah that was a much different game than i thought they were initially going for yeah i guess they've got those like virtual reality like hubs now though where you can like skin yourself and whatever character you want so technically <laughs> you can make this happen now True, but everybody chooses to be Garfield anyway, so. <laughs> As they should. Do you want to hear some very awful jokes? Yes. Okay. These were actually published. I don't know why somebody thought this was, you know, a great thing to have in there, but uh, these are the top 10 games that didn't quite make it. Number 10 is not so Final Fight. Mm. This is the quality of this list going forward, so just so you know. Uh, number 9, Madden NFL Draft, 95. That that's, actually becomes a feature in later games. So. Yeah, I was going to say, that's isn't that like one of the biggest things? No. <laughs> number 8, uh, Immortal Combat. Isn't it already kind of that way? Because like, yeah. they, they come back every time? Yeah. Especially so just, the new one, it sounds like it's time travel and a whole bunch of stuff. So nice. Uh, number seven, WWF cooked. I have no idea. Don't get it. Maybe it's the World Wildlife Foundation. <laughs> They're cooking the meat. Oh man, is this before they Whoa. got in the controversy? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Panda is delicious. <laughs> uh, NBA jelly. Uh. <laughs> Good job, guys. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> like if they were a Pokemon game, Jam and Jelly, sure. Uh, number five, Star Squirrel. That one's over my head. Don't I mean, get it. That's, I, it sounds like it could be a good game, especially in that era. Yeah. We had Punky Skunk. I, I guess it's like, yeah. Star Fox? I don't know. I don't know why a squirrel is that much more funnier than right. a fox anyway. So. Like a squirrel could totally fit in that universe. Yep. I mean, there's a damn frog, so... Right. Do a barrel roll. Number four is probably the best of the list here. Uh, Michael Jordan presents Minor League Baseball. <laughs> I like that one quite a bit. Um, number three, The Legend of Helga. I'm down with that. Yeah, like if they made a... Like a Viking version of Zelda. A Viking? I guess the uh, Wind Waker boat is pretty much a Viking ship, isn't it? From Yeah, so Helga's probably in there, in that universe somewhere. Makes sense. Uh, Super Mario Triplets? Don't get it. I mean, when, once the later game started allowing up to four people, I mean... <laughs> technically, technically this happened so yeah. it's not really a joke it just really exists yeah the number one game that didn't make it final fantasy island why is that funny exactly then fantasy again island final then again fantasy there's island. there was a theory that uh on the David Letterman when he used to do his top tens, that you didn't put the funniest joke at number one. You put it farther down the list, so you get the bigger laughs then, for whatever reason. But that's the way the writers did it. So maybe this guy's a professional. He knows how to write a top ten list. Must be. I mean, those were all great. <laughs> I mean, the NBA jelly. <laughs> oh, boy. It, I I mean, I can't think of anything better to go out on than that. I'll take it so. Yes. Get us, get us out of here. <laughs> uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. You should send us an email. 
because we don't receive a lot, but we hey. want some. <laughs> Making us sound pathetic. We can, Come on, man. Sorry. We get tons of emails, so hopefully we can find your email in our inbox. Our spam filter is full. You can send those emails to weekendrentalpodcast at gmail.com. Make sure you check us out on Twitter and YouTube. There's lots of things happening on both of those. And then, of course, you can find everything else, Weekend Rental, at weekendpodcast.com. And as always, be kind. Rewind. Bananas. Jelly. Sanic. Big bananas. <laughs>